Jeremy Bernard Corbyn, born 26 May 1949, is a British politician serving as leader of the Labour Party and leader of the opposition since 2015. Corbyn was first elected Member of Parliament MP for Islington North in 1983. Ideologically, Corbyn identifies as a democratic socialist. He advocates reversing austerity cuts to public services and welfare funding made since 2010, and proposes renationalisation of public utilities and the railways. An anti-war and anti-nuclear campaigner since his youth, he broadly supports a foreign policy of military non-interventionism and unilateral nuclear disarmament. Corbyn began his career as a representative for various trade unions. His political career began when he was elected to Haringey Council in 1974, he later became Secretary of Harnsey Constituency Labour Party, and continued in both roles until elected MP for Islington North. As a backbench MP he was known for his activism and rebelliousness, frequently voting against the Labour Whip, including when the party was in government under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. Corbyn was also the national chair of the Stop the War Coalition from 2011 to 2015. Corbyn announced his candidacy for the Labour leadership following Labour's defeat in the 2015 general election and the resignation of Ed Miliband. Despite entering the leadership race as the dark horse candidate and having only just secured 35 nominations from fellow Labour MPs to be placed on the ballot, Corbyn quickly emerged as the leading candidate and was elected leader in September 2015, with a first round vote of 59.5%. After the UK voted to leave the EU in June 2016, Labour MPs passed a vote of no confidence in Corbyn by 172 votes to 40 following the resignation of around two-thirds of Corbyn's shadow cabinet. In the September 2016 leadership contest, Corbyn retained the party leadership with an increased vote share of 61.8%. In the SNAP 2017 general election, Labour under Corbyn again finished as the second largest party in Parliament, but increased their share of the popular vote to 40%, resulting in a net gain of 30 seats and a hung Parliament. It was the first time Labour had made a net gain of seats since 1997, and the party's 9.6% increase in vote share was its largest in a single general election since 1945. <laughs> Early life Corbyn was born in Chippenham and brought up in nearby Kington St. Michael in Wiltshire. He is the youngest of the four sons of Naomi Loveday, Nay Josling, 1915-1987, a maths teacher, and David Benjamin Corbyn, 1915-1986, an electrical engineer and expert in power rectifiers. His brother Piers Corbyn is a physicist and meteorologist. His parents were Labour Party members and peace campaigners who met in the 1930s at a committee meeting in support of the Spanish Republic at Conway Hall during the Spanish Civil War. When Corbyn was seven years old, the family moved to Pave Lane in Shropshire, where his father bought Yew Tree Manor, a 17th-century country house which was once part of the Duke of Sutherland's Lillishall estate. Corbyn was educated at Castle House School, an independent preparatory school near Newport, Shropshire, before attending Adams Grammar School as a day student. While still at school, he became active in the Reckon constituency Young Socialists, his local Labour Party, and the League Against Cruel Sports. He joined the Labour Party at age 16 and achieved two E grade A levels, the lowest possible passing grade, before leaving school at 18. Corbyn joined the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament in 1966 whilst at school and later became one of its three vice chairs and subsequently vice president. After school, Corbyn worked briefly as a reporter for a local newspaper, the Newport and Market Drayton Advertiser. At around the age of 19 he spent two years doing voluntary service overseas in Jamaica as a youth worker and geography teacher. He subsequently travelled through Latin America in 1969 and 1970, visiting Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay and Chile. Whilst in Brazil he participated in a student demonstration in São Paulo against the Brazilian military government. He also attended a May Day March in Santiago, where the atmosphere around Salvador Allende's Popular Unity Alliance which swept to power in the Chilean elections of 1970 made an impression on him. I noticed something very different from anything I had experienced. What Popular Unity and Allende had done was weld together the folk tradition, the song tradition, the artistic tradition and the intellectual tradition. Topic. 
Early career and political activities Returning to the UK in 1971, he worked as an official for the National Union of Tailors and Garment Workers. Corbyn began a course in trade union studies at North London Polytechnic but left after a year without a degree after a series of arguments with his tutors over the curriculum. He worked as a trade union organiser for the National Union of Public Employees and Amalgamated Engineering and Electrical Union, where his union was approached by Tony Benn and encouraged to produce a blueprint for workers' control of British Leyland. The plans did not proceed after Ben was moved to a different department. He was appointed a member of a district health authority and in early 1974, at the age of 24, he was elected to Herringy Council in South Harnsey Ward. After boundary changes in 1978 he was re-elected in Haringey Ward as councillor, remaining so until 1983. As a delegate from Harnsey to the Labour Party conference in 1978, Corbyn successfully moved a motion calling for dentists to be employed by the NHS rather than private contractors. He also spoke in another debate, describing a motion calling for greater support for law and order as more appropriate to the National Front than to the Labour Party. Corbyn became the local Labour Party's agent and organiser, and had responsibility for the 1979 general election campaign in Harnsey. Around this time, he became involved with the London Labour Briefing, where he was a contributor. Described by The Times in 1981 as Briefing's founder, the Economist in a 1982 article named Corbyn as Briefing's general secretary figure. As did a profile on Corbyn compiled by parliamentary biographer Andrew Roth in 2004, which alleges that he joined the editorial board as General Secretary in 1979. Michael Crick in his 2016 edition of Militant says Corbyn was a member of the editorial board. As does Lansley, Goss and Wolmar's 1989 work, The Rise and Fall of the Municipal Left. However, Corbyn said these reports were inaccurate in 2017, telling Sophie Ridge. I read the magazine. I wrote for the magazine. I was not a member of the editorial board. I didn't agree with it." He worked on Tony Benn's unsuccessful deputy leadership campaign in 1981. He was keen to allow former international Marxist group member Tariq Ali to join the party, despite Labour's national executive having declared him unacceptable, and declared that, "...so far as we are concerned, he's a member of the party and he'll be issued with a card." In May 1982, when Corbyn was chairman of the constituency Labour Party, Ali was given a party card signed by Corbyn. In November the local party voted by 17 to 14 to insist on his membership, up to and including the point of disbandment of the party. In the July 1982 edition of Briefing, Corbyn opposed expulsions of the Trotskyist and Entryist group Militant, saying that, if expulsions are in order for Militant, they should apply to us too. In the same year, he was the provisional convener of Defeat the Witch Hunt campaign, based at Corbyn's then address. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Parliamentary Backbencher 1983 to 2015. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Labour in Opposition 1983 to 97. Corbyn was selected as the Labour Party candidate for the constituency of Islington North, in February 1982, winning the final ballot by 39 votes against 35 for GLC councillor Paul Boateng, who became one of the first three black British MPs. At the 1983 general election he was elected Member of Parliament for Islington North, after defeating the incumbent Michael O'Halloran and immediately joined the Socialist Campaign Group, later becoming Secretary of the Group. Shortly after being elected to Parliament, he began writing a weekly column for the left-wing Morning Star newspaper. In May 2015, he said that, "...the Star is the most precious and only voice we have in the daily media." In February 2017, Morning Star said about Corbyn, "...he has been bullied, betrayed and ridiculed, and yet he carries on with the same grace and care he always shows to others, however objectionable their behaviour and treatment of him might be." In 1983, Corbyn spoke out on a No Socialism Without Gay Liberation 
platform and continued to campaign for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender rights. He was a campaigner against apartheid in South Africa, serving on the national executive of the anti-apartheid movement, and was arrested in 1984 while demonstrating outside South Africa House, leading to a viral image of Corbyn being arrested circulated by supporters on social media. This was as a member of the City of London Anti-Apartheid Group who carried out a non-stop picket for 1,408 days to campaign for Nelson Mandela's release from prison. The anti-apartheid movement did not support this protest, as they had agreed not to demonstrate within 30 feet of the embassy, and the picket failed to gain support from the London ANC or Mandela following his release from prison in 1990. He supported the 1984-85 miners' strike and, in 1985, he invited striking miners into House of Commons gallery who were expelled for shouting, Coal not dole. Corbyn was given a medallion at the end of the strike by the miners in recognition of his help. In 1985, he was appointed National Secretary of the newly launched Anti Fascist Action. During the BBC's Newsnight in 1984, Conservative MP Terry Dix asserted that so called Labour scruffs, such as Corbyn, who at this time was known for wearing open necked shirts to the Commons, should be banned from addressing the House of Commons unless they maintained higher standards. Corbyn responded, saying that, it's not a fashion parade, it's not a gentleman's club, it's not a banker's institute, it's a place where the people are represented. <inaudible> Irish politics In the 1980s Corbyn took a keen interest in the conflict in Northern Ireland. He wanted to develop dialogue with the Irish Republican Party Sinn Féin and so, when Gerry Adams became the first Sinn Féin MP in 1983, Corbyn met with Adams at Westminster along with a number of other Labour MPs. In 1984, Corbyn and Ken Livingstone invited Gerry Adams, two convicted IRA volunteers and other members of Sinn Féin to Westminster. The meeting took place three weeks after the Brighton Hotel bombing, an attack on the Conservative Party leadership carried out by the IRA that killed five people. He became known during the 1980s for his work on behalf of the Guildford Four and Birmingham Six, who were eventually found to have been wrongly convicted of responsibility for fatal IRA bombings in England in the mid-70s. In the run-up to the 2017 general election, Corbyn said that he had never met the IRA. Although Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott later clarified that although he had met members of the IRA, he met with them in their capacity as activists in Sinn Féin. In 1986, Corbyn was arrested with 15 demonstrators protesting against the trial of a group of IRA members including the Brighton bomber Patrick McGee. McGee would be found guilty of murdering five people. After refusing police requests to move from outside the court, Corbyn and the other protesters were arrested for obstruction and held for five hours before being released on bail, but were not charged. Following the 1987 Lochgall ambush, in which eight IRA members and one civilian were shot dead by the British Army in an operation to defend a police station, Corbyn attended a commemoration by the Wolf Tone Society and stated, I'm happy to commemorate all those who died fighting for an independent Ireland. In the early 1990s, MI5 opened a temporary file on Corbyn to monitor his links to the IRA. The Metropolitan Police's special branch monitored Corbyn for two decades, as he was deemed to be a subversive, someone who might undermine parliamentary democracy. He appeared at a number of Republican protest events. According to the Sunday Times, following research in Irish and Republican archives, Corbyn was involved in over 72 events connected with Sinn Féin, or other pro-Republican groups. During the period of the IRA's paramilitary campaign, he voted against the 1985 Anglo-Irish Agreement, saying, We believe that the agreement strengthens rather than weakens the border between the six and the 26 counties, and those of us who wish to see a united Ireland oppose the agreement for that reason. In 1998, he supported and voted for the Good Friday Agreement, saying he looked forward to peace, hope and reconciliation in Ireland in the future. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Israeli Embassy Bombers. Corbyn supported the campaign to overturn the convictions of Jawad Batma and Samar Alami for the 1994 bombing of the Israeli embassy in London. Batma and Alami had admitted possessing explosives and guns but denied they were for use in Britain. 
Corbyn signed five early day motions in support of their case between 2002 and 2006, raising issues of public interest and calling for their parole. The convictions were upheld by the High Court of Justice in 2001 and by the European Court of Human Rights in 2007. Topic. Poll tax protests and select committee membership In 1990, Corbyn opposed the poll tax formerly known as the community charge and nearly went to jail for not paying the tax. He appeared in court the following year as a result. Corbyn sat on the Social Security Select Committee from 1992 to 1997, the London Regional Select Committee from 2009 to 2010, and the Justice Select Committee from 2010 to 2015. Topic: <laughs> Labour in Government 1997 to 2010. Between 1997 and 2010, during the most recent Labour government, Corbyn was the Labour MP who voted most often against the party whip, including three line whip votes. In 2005 he was identified as the second most rebellious Labour MP of all time when the party was in government. He was the most rebellious Labour MP in the 1997-2001 Parliament, the 2001-2005 Parliament and the 2005-2010 Parliament, defying the whip 428 times while Labour was in power. Jacobin described him as, "...a figure who for decades challenged them Labour Party elites from the backbench as one of the most rebellious left-wing members of Parliament." Stop the War Coalition and Anti-War Activism In October 2001, Corbyn was elected to the steering committee of the Stop the War Coalition, which was formed to oppose the Afghanistan War which started later that year. In 2002, Corbyn reported unrest. There is disquiet about issues of foreign policy among some members of the Labour Party. He cited the deployment of troops to Afghanistan and the threat of bombing Iraq." As examples. He was vehemently opposed to the Iraq War in 2003, and spoke at dozens of anti-war rallies in Britain and overseas. He helped organise the February anti-Iraq War protest which was claimed to be the largest such protest in British political history. In 2006, Corbyn was one of 12 Labour MPs to support Plaid Cymru and the Scottish National Party's call for a parliamentary inquiry into the Iraq War. He was elected chair of the coalition in succession to Andrew Murray in September 2011, but resigned once he became leader of the Labour Party in September 2015. Topic. Parliamentary groups and activism Corbyn is a member of a number of parliamentary trade union groups, he is sponsored by several trade unions, including Unison, Unite and the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers. He is a supporter of the Unite Against Fascism Pressure Group. Corbyn was chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group APPG on the Chagos Islands, chair of the APPG on Mexico, vice-chair of the APPG on Latin America and vice-chair of the APPG on Human Rights. He has advocated for the rights of the forcibly removed Chagosians to return to the British Indian Ocean Territory. Corbyn hosted a call-in show on Press TV, an Iranian government television channel, from 2009 to 2012, for which he was paid up to £20,000, according to the Register of Members' Interests at the House of Commons. Corbyn's final appearance was six months after the network had its UK broadcasting licence revoked by Ofcom for its part in filming the detention and torture of Maziar Bihari, an Iranian journalist. Ofcom ruled in November 2010 that Corbyn did not show due impartiality when he appeared on Press TV as a guest on George Galloway's weekly show. Topic. Labour in Opposition 2010 Corbyn was one of 16 signatories to an open letter to Ed Miliband in January 2015 calling for Labour to make a commitment to opposing further austerity, to take rail franchises back into public ownership, and to strengthen collective bargaining arrangements. Before becoming party leader, Corbyn had been returned as Member of Parliament for Islington North seven times, gaining 60.24% of the vote and a majority of 21,194 in the 2015 general election. Topic. Leadership of the Labour Party 2015-present 
Topic: <laughs> Leadership election. Following the Labour Party's defeat at the general election on the 7th of May 2015, Ed Miliband resigned as its party leader, triggering a leadership election. It was reported in media sources that Corbyn was considering standing as a candidate, having been disillusioned by the lack of a left-wing voice. Corbyn confirmed to his local newspaper, the Islington Tribune, that he would stand in the election on a clear anti-austerity platform. He added, This decision is in response to an overwhelming call by Labour Party members who want to see a broader range of candidates and a thorough debate about the future of the party. I am standing to give Labour Party members a voice in this debate. The other candidates were Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, Shadow Health Secretary Andy Burnham and Shadow Care Minister Liz Kendall. Corbyn had the lowest number of nominations from fellow MPs of any Labour Party leader, and several who nominated him later claimed to have cleared him to run more to widen the political debate within the party than because of a desire or expectation that he would win. Nonetheless, he rapidly became the frontrunner among the candidates. At the second reading of the Welfare Reform and Work Bill in July 2015, Corbyn joined 47 Labour MPs to oppose the bill, describing it as rotten and indefensible, whilst the other three leadership candidates abstained under direction from interim leader Harriet Harman. In August 2015, he called on Ian Duncan Smith to resign as Secretary of State for Work and Pensions after it was reported that thousands of disabled people had died after being found fit to work by work capability assessments instituted in 2008 between 2011 and 2014, although this claim was challenged by the government and by Fullfact who noted that the figure included those who had died and therefore their claim had ended, rather than being found fit for work. Following a rule change under Miliband, members of the public who supported Labour's aims and values could join the party as registered supporters for three pounds and be entitled to vote in the election. There was speculation the rule change would lead to Corbyn being elected by registered supporters without majority support from ordinary members. Corbyn was elected party leader in a landslide victory on 12 September 2015 with 59.5% of first preference votes in the first round of voting. Corbyn would have won in the first round with 51% of votes, even without three pounds registered supporters, having gained the support of 49.6% of full members and 57.6% of affiliated supporters. Corbyn's 40.5% majority was a larger proportional majority than that attained by Tony Blair in 1994. His margin of victory was said to be the largest mandate ever won by a party leader. First term as Leader of the Opposition 2015-2017 After being elected leader, Corbyn became leader of the official opposition and shortly thereafter his appointment to the Privy Council was announced. In Corbyn's first Prime Minister's question session as leader, he broke with the traditional format by asking the Prime Minister six questions he had received from members of the public, the result of his invitation to Labour Party members to send suggestions, for which he received around 40,000 emails. Corbyn stressed his desire to reduce the theatrical nature of the House of Commons, and his debut was described in a Guardian editorial as a good start and a long overdue. Change to the tone of PMQs. He delivered his first Labour annual conference address as leader on the 29th of September 2015. In July 2016, a study and analysis by academics from the London School of Economics of months of eight national newspaper articles about Corbyn in the first months of his leadership of Labour showed that 75% of them either distorted or failed to represent his actual views on subjects. Topic: First Shadow Cabinet and other appointments. On 13 September 2015, Corbyn unveiled his shadow cabinet. He appointed his leadership campaign manager and long-standing political ally John McDonnell as shadow chancellor, leadership opponent Andy Burnham as shadow home secretary, and Angela Eagle as shadow first secretary of state to deputise for him in the House of Commons. Corbyn promoted a number of female backbench MPs to shadow cabinet roles, including Diane Abbott, Heidi Alexander and Lisa Nandy, making his the first shadow cabinet with more women than men, although the most senior roles went to men. In October 2015, Corbyn appointed The Guardian journalist Sumas Milne as the Labour Party's Executive Director of Strategy and Communications. 
Topic: <laughs> Military intervention in Syria. After members of Islamic State carried out terrorist attacks in Paris in November 2015, Corbyn suggested that the only way to deal with the threat posed by the jihadist group would be to reach a political settlement aimed at resolving the Syrian civil war. Prime Minister David Cameron sought to build political consensus for UK military intervention against as targets in Syria in the days after the attacks. Corbyn warned against external intervention in Syria but told delegates that Labour would consider the proposals the government brings forward." Cameron set out his case for military intervention to Parliament in November. Corbyn's shadow cabinet met after the Prime Minister's statement in which Corbyn said he would continue with efforts to reach a common view on Syria, while shadow Foreign Secretary Hillary Benn suggested the case for airstrikes was compelling. Corbyn sent a letter to Labour MPs saying that he could not support military action against Islamic State. The issue is whether what the Prime Minister is proposing strengthens, or undermines, our national security. I do not believe the current proposal for air strikes in Syria will protect our security and therefore cannot support it." Amid widespread reports of division in the Parliamentary Labour Party, Corbyn insisted that the final decision on whether the Labour Party would oppose air strikes rested with him. Corbyn eventually agreed that Labour MPs would be given a free vote on air strikes when the issue was voted on. Sixty-six Labour MPs voted for the Syrian air strikes, including Hillary Benn and Deputy Labour leader Tom Watson, while Corbyn and the majority of Labour MPs voted against. Topic. January 2016 Shadow Cabinet reshuffle There was widespread speculation following the vote that Corbyn would reshuffle his shadow cabinet to remove Hillary Benn, but Corbyn's January reshuffle retained Benn in the same position. The reshuffle prompted the resignations of three junior shadow ministers who were unhappy that Corbyn had demoted MPs who disagreed with his position on Syria and Trident. On 6 January 2016, Corbyn replaced Shadow Culture Secretary Michael Duffer with Shadow Defense Secretary Maria Eagle, who was in turn replaced by Shadow Employment Minister Emily Thornberry. Thornberry, unlike Maria Eagle, is an opponent of nuclear weapons and British involvement in Syria. Corbyn also replaced Shadow Europe Minister not attending Shadow Cabinet Pat McFadden with Pat Glass. On the 11th of January 2016, Shadow Attorney General Catherine McKinnell resigned, citing party infighting, family reasons and the ability to speak in Parliament beyond her legal portfolio. She was replaced by Carl Turner. Topic. May 2016 local elections In the 2016 local elections, Labour had a net loss of 18 local council seats and controlled as many councils as before, gaining control of Bristol but losing Dudley. There were also Westminster by-elections in two Labour safe seats, which Labour retained, Ogmore and Sheffield Brightside in Hillsborough. The BBC's projected national vote share was 31% for Labour, 30% for the Conservatives, 15% for the Liberal Democrats and 12% for UKIP. Labour candidate Sadiq Khan won the London mayorship from the Conservatives. Labour's misfortunes in Scotland continued, where they fell into third place behind the Conservatives. They retained government in Wales despite some small losses. Topic. Summer 2016 leadership crisis Topic. EU referendum Following the June 2016 vote to leave the EU, Corbyn was accused of lukewarm campaigning for Britain to stay in the European Union and showing a lack of leadership on the issue by several party figures. Alan Johnson, who headed up the Labour in for Britain campaign said, at times, it felt as if Corbyn's office was working against the rest of the party and had conflicting objectives. Corbyn's decision to go on holiday during the campaign was criticised. In September 2016, Corbyn's spokesman said Corbyn wanted access to the European single market, but there were aspects of EU membership related to privatisation, which Jeremy campaigned against in the referendum campaign. Topic. Shadow cabinet resignations and vote of no confidence 
Three days after the EU referendum, Hillary Benn was sacked after it was disclosed that he had been organizing a mass resignation of shadow cabinet members to force Corbyn to stand down. Several other cabinet members resigned in solidarity with Benn and by 27 June 23 of the 31 shadow cabinet members had resigned their roles as did seven parliamentary private secretaries. Earlier Corbyn announced changes to his shadow cabinet, moving Emily Thornberry to shadow foreign secretary, Diane Abbott to shadow health secretary, and appointing Pat Glass, Andy MacDonald, Clive Lewis, Rebecca Long Bailey, Kate Osamore, Rachel Maskell, Kat Smith and Dave Anderson to his shadow cabinet. However just two days later one of the newly appointed members, Pat Glass, resigned, saying, The situation is untenable. A motion of no confidence in Corbyn as Labour leader was tabled by MPs Margaret Hodge and Ann Coffey on 24 June 2016. Hodge said, This has been a tumultuous referendum which has been a test of leadership. Jeremy has failed that test. Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell and union leaders including Len McCluskey condemned the motion. On 28 June, he lost the vote of confidence by Labour Party MPs by 172 to 40. He responded with a statement that the motion had no constitutional legitimacy and that he intended to continue as the elected leader. The vote did not require the party to call a leadership election, but was expected to lead to a leadership challenge. Corbyn was encouraged to resign by Tom Watson and senior Labour politicians including his predecessor, Ed Miliband. Several union leaders from GMB, UCATT, the CWU, the TSSA, ASLEF, the FBU, the BFWAU and the NUM issued a joint statement saying that Corbyn was the democratically elected leader of Labour and his position should not be challenged except through the proper democratic procedures provided for in the party's constitution and that a leadership election would be an unnecessary distraction. 2016 leadership challenge and election The division between Corbyn and the Labour Parliamentary Party continued. On the 11th of July 2016 Angela Eagle, who had recently resigned from his shadow cabinet, formally launched her leadership campaign. After news reports that Eagle's office had been vandalized, and threats and abuse to other MPs, including death threats to himself, Corbyn said, It is extremely concerning that Angela Eagle has been the victim of a threatening act, and called for respect and dignity, even where there is disagreement. On 12 July 2016, following a dispute as to whether the elected leader would need nominations in an election as a challenger, to their own leadership, Labour's National Executive Committee NEC resolved that Corbyn, as the incumbent leader, had an automatic right to be on the ballot, and also decided that members needed to have signed up on or before 12 January 2016 to be eligible to vote, meaning that many members who had joined recently would not be able to vote. The NEC did however decide that, registered supporters would be entitled to vote if they paid a one-off fee of £25. 184,541 people subsequently paid the one-off fee to become registered supporters of the party during the two-day window in July, meaning that over 700,000 people had a vote in the leadership election. The decision to retain Corbyn on the ballot was contested unsuccessfully in a high court action brought by Labour donor Michael Foster. On 13 July, Owen Smith entered the Labour Party leadership race. Subsequently, on 19 July, Angela Eagle withdrew and offered her endorsement to Smith. A survey of the public found that 66% of those surveyed believed that the Labour Party needed a new leader before the 2020 elections and only 23% believed that Corbyn would make a good Prime Minister while Theresa May had an approval rating of 55%. A later poll on 23 July found that among those who said they backed Labour, 54% supported Corbyn against just 22% who would prefer Smith. When voters were asked who they thought would be the best Prime Minister, Corbyn or Theresa May, among Labour supporters 48% said Corbyn and 22% May, among all UK voters 52% chose May and just 16% were for Corbyn, more than 40 female Labour MPs, in an open letter during the campaign in July 2016, called on Corbyn to deal with issues relating to online abuse, and criticised him for his allegedly unsatisfactory responses and inaction. Speaking at the launch of policies intending to democratize the Internet in late August, Corbyn described such abuse as appalling. He continued, 
I have set up a code of conduct on this. The Labour Party has a code of conduct on this, and it does have to be dealt with." On 16 August 2016, Corbyn released a video of himself sitting on the floor of a Virgin Trains East Coast train while travelling to a leadership hustings in Gateshead. Corbyn said the train was "...ram-packed," and used this to support his policy to reverse the 1990s privatisation of the railways of Great Britain. A dispute, nicknamed Train Gate in the media, developed a week later when Virgin released CCTV images appearing to show that Corbyn had walked past some available seats on the train before recording his video. Corbyn subsequently said that there had not been room for all his team to sit together until later on in the journey, when other passengers were upgraded by train staff. The syphologist John Curtis wrote just before Corbyn's second leadership win. There is evidently a section of the British public, to be found particularly among younger voters, for whom the Labour leader does have an appeal, it just does not look like a section that is big enough, on its own at least, to enable Labour to win a general election. Meanwhile, a poll for the Independent by BMG Research, suggested that working class voters were more likely to consider Corbyn incompetent than those from the middle class, and a higher proportion thought he was out of touch. Also, Martin Kettle of The Guardian wrote that, "...many Labour MPs, even some who face defeat, want an early election," to prove decisively that Corbyn's Labour is unelectable as a government. If there is hope for Labour it lies with the voters. Only they can change the party. Corbyn was re-elected as Labour leader on 24 September, with 313,209 votes 61.8% compared to 193,229 38.2% for Owen Smith, a slightly increased share of the vote compared to his election in 2015, when he won 59%. On a turnout of 77.6%, Corbyn won the support of 59% of party members, 70% of registered supporters and 60% of affiliated supporters. In his acceptance speech, Corbyn called on the Labour family to end their divisions and to wipe that slate clean from today and get on with the work we've got to do as a party. He continued. Together, arguing for the real change this country needs, I have no doubt this party can win the next election whenever the Prime Minister decides to call it and form the next government. <laughs> Article 50 In January 2017, Corbyn announced that he would impose a three-line whip to force Labour MPs in favour of triggering Article 50 of the Treaty on European Union to initiate the withdrawal of the UK from the EU. In response, two Labour whips said they would vote against the bill. Tulip Sadiq, the Shadow Minister for Early Years, and Joe Stevens, the Shadow Welsh Secretary resigned in protest. On 1 February, 47 Labour MPs defied Corbyn's whip on the second reading of the bill. Topic. May 2017 local elections At the 2017 local elections, Labour lost nearly 400 councillors and control of Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire County Council. The BBC's projected national vote share was 38% for the Conservatives, 27% for Labour, 18% for the Liberal Democrats and 5% for UKIP, with others on around 12%. Topic. General election, 2017 Corbyn said he welcomed Prime Minister Theresa May's proposal to seek an early general election in 2017. He said his party should support the government's move in the parliamentary vote. Earlier in the year, Corbyn had become the first opposition party leader since 1982 to lose a by election to an incumbent government, and at the time, May called the election Labour trailed the Conservative Party by up to 25 points in some opinion polls. A large Conservative majority was widely predicted. However, following the short campaign, Labour surprised many pundits by increasing their number and share of votes and seats, with the Conservatives remaining the largest party but losing their parliamentary majority. Labour's vote share increase was its largest since 1945. Corbyn's election campaign featured rallies with a large audience and connected with a grassroots following for the party, including appearing on stage in front of a crowd of 20,000 at the Wirral Live Festival in Prenton Park. He chose to take part in television debates and dressed more professionally than usual, wearing a business suit and tie. He said the result was a public call for the end of austerity politics 
and suggested May should step down as Prime Minister. Corbyn said that he had received the largest vote for a winning candidate in the history of his borough. Topic. Opinion polling Opinion polls during the first few months of his leadership gave Corbyn lower personal approval ratings than any previous Labour leader in the early stages of their leadership amongst the general public. His approval amongst party members, however, was initially strong reaching a net approval of plus 4-5 in May 2016, though this fell back sharply to just plus 3 by the end of the next month following criticism of Corbyn's handling of the EU referendum and a string of shadow cabinet resignations. A poll by election data in February 2017 found that 50% of Labour voters wanted Corbyn to stand down by the next election, while 44% wanted him to stay. In the same month, YouGov found party members' net approval rating of Corbyn was 17%, whereas a year earlier the result found by the same pollsters had been 55%. Also during February 2017, Ipsos Mori found Corbyn's satisfaction rating among the electorate as a whole was minus 38%, among Labour voters it was minus 9%. Polling by the end of the first week of campaigning during the 2017 general election was suggesting a defeat for Labour with the Parliamentary Party much reduced and a landslide victory for the Conservatives with a majority of perhaps 150 MPs. An ITV Wales, YouGov poll at this time placed the Conservatives on 40% in Wales against Labour's 30%. Labour MPs have formed a majority in Wales since the 1922 election. However, an opinion poll published on the 22nd of May suggested that the position had been reversed, with Labour now polling 44% in Wales and the Conservatives 34%. Polls following the publication of the Labour and Conservative manifestos suggested that nationally, Labour was narrowing the Conservative lead to nine points, with YouGov putting the party on 35% of the vote. The final election polls predicted an increased majority for the Tories. Topic second term as leader of the opposition 2017 topic Aftermath of the election In the months following the election, Labour consistently had a small lead in opinion polling. In the wake of the election, Corbyn announced that the party was being placed on permanent campaign mode, expecting another general election to be called as soon as autumn 2017. He began a series of rallies in key marginal seats, including Hastings and Rye, Southampton Itchen and Bournemouth West. Topic June 2017 Shadow Cabinet Corbyn sacked three Shadow Cabinet members and a fourth resigned after they rebelled against party orders to abstain on a motion aimed at keeping the UK in the EU single market, which was put forward by Labour MP Chuka Yumana. Topic Policies and views In 1997, the political scientists David Butler and Dennis Kavanaugh described Corbyn's political stance as far left, although in 2017, Stephen Bush suggested his association with the party's left wing owes more to his past career and rhetoric than the policies he has pursued as party leader. When asked if he regarded himself as a Marxist, Corbyn responded by saying, That is a very interesting question actually. I haven't thought about that for a long time. I haven't really read as much of Marx as we should have done. I have read quite a bit but not that much. Similarly, defending John McDonnell's statement that there is a lot to learn from Karl Marx's book Das Kapital, Corbyn described Marx as a great economist. Corbyn has said he has read some of the works of Adam Smith, Karl Marx and David Ricardo and has looked at many, many others. Topic economy and taxation Corbyn has campaigned against private finance initiative PFI schemes, supported a higher rate of income tax for the wealthiest in society, and his shadow chancellor proposed the introduction of a £10 per hour living wage. He advocates recouping losses from tax avoidance and evasion by investing £1 billion in HMRC. Corbyn would also seek to reduce an estimated £93 billion that companies receive in tax relief. The amount is made up of several reliefs, including railway and energy subsidies, regional development grants, relief on investment and government procurement from the private sector. Corbyn opposes austerity, and has advocated an economic strategy based on investing to grow as opposed to making spending cuts. During his first Labour leadership election campaign, Corbyn proposed that the Bank of England should be able to issue money for capital spending, especially house building, instead of quantitative easing, which attempts to stimulate the economy by buying assets from commercial banks. He describes it as people's quantitative easing. A number of economists, including Steve Keane, argued in a letter to The Guardian that despite claims to the contrary there was nothing extreme left about the anti-austerity policies he proposed in his leadership campaign. 
Robert Skidelsky offered a qualified endorsement of Corbyn's proposals to carry out QE through a national investment bank. As the policy would change the central bank's focus on stabilising prices, however, it has been argued it could increase the perceived risk of investing in the UK and raise the prospect of increased inflation. His second leadership campaign saw him promise £500 billion in additional public spending, though he did not detail how he would fund it. Corbyn has been a consistent supporter of renationalising public utilities, such as the now privatised British Rail and Energy Companies, back into public ownership. Initially Corbyn suggested completely renationalizing the entire railway network, but would now bring them under public control, line by line, as franchises expire. Topic. National and constitutional issues Corbyn is a long-standing supporter of a united Ireland and reportedly described himself as an anti-imperialist campaigner for the region in 1984. In 1985, Corbyn voted against the Anglo-Irish Agreement, saying that it strengthened the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland and he opposed it as he wished to see a united Ireland. In July 1998, Corbyn endorsed the Good Friday Agreement by voting for the Northern Ireland Bill saying, We look forward to peace, hope and reconciliation in Ireland in the future. Corbyn would prefer Britain to become a republic, but has said that, given the royal family's popularity, it's not a battle that I am fighting. On the issue of Scottish independence, when asked if he would consider himself a unionist, Corbyn said, No, I would describe myself as a socialist. I would prefer the UK to stay together, yes, but I recognise the right of people to take the decision on their own autonomy and independence. Corbyn said that he did not favour holding a second Scottish independence referendum, but that it would be wrong for the UK Parliament to block such a referendum if the Scottish Parliament desired to have one. As leader of the opposition, Corbyn was one of the sponsors for the Constitutional Convention Bill, which was an attempt at codifying the UK's constitution, which has not been compiled into a single document. He appointed a shadow minister for the Constitutional Convention into his shadow cabinet, however, Theresa Pierce stepped down after the May 2017 local elections and this position has since remained vacant. In October 2017, Corbyn was one of 113 MPs to sign a cross-party petition to Home Secretary Amber Rudd, which requested making it a criminal offence for opponents of abortion to hold protests outside of abortion clinics. The letter called for buffer zones to be established around clinics, arguing women face daily abuse when undergoing terminations, with protesters instead given space in town centres or speaker's corner. He also promised to allow abortion in Northern Ireland as well as same-sex marriage. Topic. European Union Corbyn has previously been a left-wing Eurosceptic. In the 1975 European Communities referendum, Corbyn opposed Britain's membership of the European Communities, the precursor of the European Union. Corbyn also opposed the ratification of the Maastricht Treaty in 1993, opposed the Lisbon Treaty in 2008, and backed a proposed referendum on British withdrawal from the European Union in 2011. Additionally, he accused the EU of acting brutally. In the 2015 Greek crisis by allowing financiers to destroy its economy, despite earlier comments during the leadership campaign that there might be circumstances in which he would favour withdrawal, in September 2015, Corbyn said that Labour would campaign for Britain to stay in the EU regardless of the result of Cameron's negotiations, and instead, pledge to reverse any changes, if Cameron reduced the rights of workers or citizens. He also believed that Britain should play a crucial role in Europe by making demands about working arrangements across the continent, the levels of corporation taxation, and informing an agreement on environmental regulation. In June 2016, in the run up to the EU referendum, Corbyn said that there was an overwhelming case for staying in the EU. In a speech in London, Corbyn said, we, the Labour Party, are overwhelmingly for staying in, because we believe the European Union has brought investment, jobs and protection for workers, consumers and the environment." Corbyn also criticised media coverage and warnings from both sides, saying that the debate had been dominated too much by "...myth-making and prophecies of doom." He said he was seven or seven and a half." Out of 10 for staying in the EU, in July 2017, Corbyn said that Britain could not remain in the European single market after leaving the EU, saying that membership of the single market was 
dependent on membership of the EU, although it includes some non EU countries. Shadow Minister Barry Gardiner later suggested that Corbyn meant that Labour interpreted the referendum result as wanting to leave the single market. Corbyn said that Labour would campaign for an alternative arrangement involving tariff free access. In January 2018, Corbyn reiterated that Labour would not seek to keep the UK in the single market after Brexit. However, in June 2018, Corbyn called for a new single market deal for the UK after Brexit, maintaining full access to the EU internal market, as opposed to the Norway model, which pro Remainers in the party wish to see. In October 2017, Corbyn said that he would vote Remain in another referendum. In 2018, Corbyn said his main reason for not committing to remaining in the single market was freedom from EU rules on state aid to industry. He said the UK government should not be held back, inside or outside the EU, from taking the steps we need to support cutting edge industries and local business. This prompted backlash from senior EU figures, who said that state subsidization would be a red line in negotiations, as it would lead to a possible trade war between the UK and EU. One senior figure told The Times, We have to protect ourselves and the single market. If a Corbyn government implements his declared policies the level playing field mechanism will lead to increased costs for Britain to access the single market because of distortions caused by state aid. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign affairs <inaudible> <inaudible> War and peace during the 1982 Falklands War, in a meeting of Herringy Council, Corbyn opposed a motion offering support to British troops sent to retake the islands, instead declaring the war to be a Tory plot, and submitted an alternative motion that condemned the war as a nauseating waste of lives and money. Corbyn has said that he would like Britain to achieve some reasonable accommodation with Argentina over their Falkland Islands dispute, with a degree of joint administration. Between the two countries over the islands, Corbyn does not consider himself an absolute pacifist and has named the Spanish Civil War, the British naval blockade to stop the slave trade in the 19th century and the role of UN peacekeepers in the 1999 crisis in East Timor as justified conflicts. However, opposing violence and war has been the whole purpose of his life. He prominently opposed the invasion of Iraq and war in Afghanistan, NATO-led military intervention in Libya, military strikes against Assad's Syria, and military action against ISIS, and served as the chair of the Stop the War coalition. When challenged on whether there were any circumstances in which he would deploy military forces overseas he said, I'm sure there are some but I can't think of them at the moment. Corbyn has called for Tony Blair to be investigated for alleged war crimes during the Iraq War. In July 2016, the Chilkat report of the Iraq inquiry was issued, criticizing the former Labour PM Tony Blair for joining the United States in the war against Iraq. Subsequently, Corbyn, who had voted against military action against Iraq, gave a speech in Westminster commenting, I now apologize sincerely on behalf of my party for the disastrous decision to go to war in Iraq in March 2003, which he called an act of military aggression launched on a false pretext. Something that has long been regarded as illegal by the overwhelming weight of international opinion. Corbyn specifically apologized to the people of Iraq, to the families of British soldiers who died in Iraq or returned injured, and to the millions of British citizens who feel our democracy was traduced and undermined by the way in which the decision to go to war was taken on. Topic. NATO and nuclear weapons Corbyn favors the United Kingdom leaving the North Atlantic Treaty Organization In May 2012, Corbyn authored a piece in the Morning Star titled, High Time for an End to NATO, where he described the organization as an instrument of Cold War manipulation. He further expanded both in the same piece, saying that, the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990, with the ending of the Warsaw Pact Mutual Defense Strategy, was the obvious time for NATO to have been disbanded." And elsewhere in a 2014 speech he said that the organization was an "...engine for the delivery of oil to the oil companies," and called for it to "...give up, go home and go away." 
For these comments and a refusal to answer whether he would defend a NATO ally in the case of attack he was criticized by Anders Fö Rasmussen, the former Prime Minister of Denmark and NATO Secretary General, who said Corbyn's opinions were "...tempting President Putin to aggression," and made comparisons between his views and those of the American President Donald Trump. He was also criticized by George Robertson, former Labour Party Defense Secretary, who said, "...it beggars belief that the leader of the party most responsible for the collective security pact of NATO should be so reckless as to undermine it by refusing to say he would come to the aid of an ally." He has since acknowledged that the British public do not agree with his beliefs that the UK should leave NATO, and instead intends to push for the organisation to "...restrict its role." In April 2014, Corbyn wrote an article for the Morning Star attributing the crisis in Ukraine to NATO. He said the root of the crisis lay in the U.S. drive to expand eastwards and described Russia's actions as not unprovoked. He has said it probably was a mistake to allow former Warsaw Pact countries to join NATO. Corbyn's views on Ukraine, Russia, and NATO were criticized by a number of writers, including Halia Koinash of the Kharkiv Human Rights Protection Group, Ann Applebaum in the Sunday Times, Ben Judah in the Independent, and Roger Boys in the Times. Writing for the Daily Telegraph, Edward Lucas saw Corbyn as having a desire to appease Russia by sacrificing Ukraine, and said that Corbyn's Anti-imperialist sentiments did not stretch to understanding countries such as Ukraine. Lithuanian ambassador Asta Skazgarite disagreed with Corbyn's portrayal of NATO, saying her country was not forced or lured into NATO as part of an American global power grab. We were pounding on the door of the alliance, demanding to be let in. Corbyn is a long-standing supporter of unilateral nuclear disarmament, although he has suggested a compromise of having submarines without nuclear weapons. In June 2016, he agreed to allow Labour MPs a free vote on the replacement of Trident, and 140 Labour MPs voted with the government in favour of the new submarines, in line with party policy, and 47 joining Corbyn to vote against. Topic. United States. Following the election of Donald Trump in the 2016 U.S. presidential elections, Jeremy Corbyn said that he believes that President Trump is not offering solutions to problems, but simply being divisive. Corbyn also called for a proposed Trump state visit to the UK to be cancelled following his executive order banning visitors from certain majority Muslim countries from entering the US. Corbyn has also criticized Trump's involvement in British politics, saying that it was not Trump's business who the British Prime Minister is, following Trump's endorsement of Boris Johnson as a possible future leader. Corbyn has also criticized Trump's attacks on Sadiq Khan as unacceptable. Topic. Israel and Palestine Corbyn is a member of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, campaigning against conflict in Gaza and what the organization considers to be apartheid in Israel. In 2012 and again in 2017, Corbyn called for an investigation into Israeli influence in British politics. In August 2016, Corbyn said, I am not in favor of the academic or cultural boycott of Israel, and I am not in favor of a blanket boycott of Israeli goods. I do support targeted boycotts aimed at undermining the existence of illegal settlements in the West Bank. At a meeting hosted by Stop the War Coalition in 2009, Corbyn said he invited friends from Hamas and Hezbollah to an event in Parliament, referred to Hamas as an organization dedicated towards the good of the Palestinian people, and said that the British government's labeling of Hamas as a terrorist organization is a big, big historical mistake. Asked on Channel 4 News in July 2015 why he had called representatives from Hamas and Hezbollah friends. Corbyn explained, I use it in a collective way, saying our friends are prepared to talk, and that the specific occasion he used it was to introduce speakers from Hezbollah at a parliamentary meeting about the Middle East. He said that he does not condone the actions of either organization. Does it mean I agree with Hamas and what it does? No. Does it mean I agree with Hezbollah and what they do? No. 
What it means is that I think to bring about a peace process, you have to talk to people with whom you may profoundly disagree. There is not going to be a peace process unless there is talks involving Israel, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and I think everyone knows that. He argued, in 2010 Corbyn claimed that some speeches by British members of parliament are written by Israel using a pre-prepared script. I'm sure our friend Israeli ambassador Ron Proser wrote it. Because they all came up with the same key words. The buzzwords were, Israel's need for security, and then, the extremism of the people on one ship, and, the existence of Turkish militants on the vessel, it came through in every single speech, this stuff came through. Topic. Tunisian wreath-laying controversy In October 2014, Corbyn visited Tunisia to attend the "...International Conference on Monitoring the Palestinian Political and Legal Situation in the Light of Israeli Aggression," organized by the Center for Strategic Studies for North Africa, alongside other British parliamentarians. While in Tunisia, Corbyn attended a commemorative service for victims of the 1985 Israeli air strikes on the PLO headquarters in Tunis. The bombardment was condemned at the time by British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and US President Ronald Reagan, as well as the UN Security Council. In August 2018, the Daily Mail reported, with pictorial evidence, that during the event, Corbyn had also attended a wreath laying at the graves of Salah Caliph and Atef Basayiso, both of whom are thought to have been key members of the Black September organization behind the 1972 Munich massacre. The Jerusalem Post commented. In another photo, Corbyn is seen close to the grave of terrorist Atef Basayiso, intelligence chief of the Palestine Liberation Organization. Basayiso is also linked to the massacre. There was condemnation from some of the British press, as well as from some members of the Labour Party and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A Labour spokesperson said that the a wreath was laid on behalf of those at the conference to all those who lost their lives, including families and children. BBC News, on 15 August, showed in a report from inside the cemetery, that for the memorial for the 1985 victims, Corbyn would have stood in a designated confined covered area where all dignitaries typically stand during annual ceremonies, which also covers the graves of Basayiso and Caliph. Corbyn said that he had been present during commemorations where a wreath was laid for Palestinian leaders linked to Black September, but did not think that he had actually been involved. A Labour spokesperson stated that Corbyn did not lay any wreath at the graves of those alleged to have been linked to the Black September organization or the 1972 Munich killings. He of course condemns that terrible attack, as he does the 1985 bombing. The Labour Party made a complaint to the press watchdog Independent Press Standards Organization against several newspapers' alleged misreporting of the event, which was later dropped. Topic: Kosovo and Bosnia. Unlike most Labour MPs at the time, Corbyn and a few other backbenchers opposed NATO intervention during the Kosovo War. In 2004 Corbyn and 24 other backbenchers signed a parliamentary motion, congratulating the journalist John Pilger on his expose of the fraudulent justifications for intervening in a genocide that never really existed in Kosovo, leading to later criticism that he had labelled Serbian war crimes as fabrications. The motion noted that initial estimates of casualties by the U.S. Ambassador for War Crimes Issues were much higher than the later body count by the International War Crimes Tribunal. In 2018, Corbyn was criticized for having dinner with Marcus Papadopoulos, a prominent pro Assad campaigner also known for denial of the Srebrenica massacre. In December 2017, Papadopoulos had tweeted, There was no siege of hashtag Sarajevo, there was no genocide at hashtag Srebrenica and there was no massacre at hashtag Aleppo. Quote, In response to the criticism, a Labour spokesman said, Jeremy Corbyn had dinner with friends from Cypriots for Labour, during which they were joined briefly by Mr. Papadopoulos, who asked to be photographed with Jeremy. Photographs of Jeremy with members of the public do not mean he endorses their views. Topic. Sri Lanka and the Tamil Tigers In 2006, Jeremy Corbyn signed a petition calling for the lifting of the ban on the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam also known as the Tamil Tigers, which it referred to as the supposedly terrorist Tamil Tigers, 
stating that the Sri Lanka government is carrying out an undeclared war against the Tamil people who have been struggling for more than two decades for the legitimate right to self-rule", and calling for an end to aerial bombardment by the Sri Lankan government. In 2009, Corbyn called for a total economic boycott of Sri Lanka, stating, "...the tourism must stop, the arms must stop, the trade must stop." He later stated the Sri Lankan cricket team should also be boycotted. He expressed outrage particularly at the reports of the depopulation of Tamil areas of eastern Sri Lanka and the relocation of Tamils, stating that denying Tamils the right to return home was in contravention of international law, as well as reports of systematic sexual violence. In 2016, Corbyn released a video stating his solidarity to stand with the Tamil community in the search for truth, justice, accountability, and reconciliation while the Labour Party reiterated its full implementation of the UN Human Rights Council's resolution on Sri Lanka. Some Tamil activists interpreted the video to be a signal of Jeremy Corbyn's support for Tamil self-determination. In 2017, John McDonnell stated that a Corbyn-led Labour government would end arms sales to Sri Lanka. <laughs> Iran. Corbyn has called for the lifting of the sanctions on Iran as part of a negotiated full settlement of issues concerning the Iranian nuclear program, and the starting of a political process to decommission Israel's nuclear arsenal. <inaudible> Saudi Arabia Corbyn has criticized Britain's close ties with Saudi Arabia and British involvement in the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. In January 2016, after a United Nations panel ruled Saudi-led bombing campaign of Yemen contravened international humanitarian law, Corbyn called for an independent inquiry into the UK's arms exports policy to Saudi Arabia. Corbyn and Hillary Benn wrote to David Cameron asking him to "...set out the exact nature of the involvement of UK personnel working with the Saudi military." Corbyn has constantly called for the British government to stop selling arms to Saudi Arabia to show that Britain wants a peace process in Yemen, not an invasion by Saudi Arabia. In March 2018, Corbyn accused Theresa May's government of colluding in war crimes committed by Saudi forces in Yemen. He said that a humanitarian disaster is now taking place in Yemen. Millions face starvation. Because of the Saudi led bombing campaign and the blockade, Corbyn has called for the suspension of arms sales to Saudi Arabia after opposition Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was murdered inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Corbyn also called for an international investigation into the murder of Jamal Khashoggi and Saudi's war crimes in Yemen. Topic Cuba Corbyn is a longtime supporter of the Cuba Solidarity Campaign, which campaigns against the U.S. embargo against Cuba and supports the Cuban Revolution. In November 2016, following the death of former Communist President of Cuba Fidel Castro, Corbyn said that Castro, despite his «flaws», was a «huge figure of modern history, national independence and 20th-century socialism». Castro's achievements were many. Internal Labour Party critics of Corbyn accused him of glossing over Castro's human rights abuses. Topic Venezuela A proponent of the Venezuela Solidarity Campaign, Corbyn praised Hugo Chavez following the death of the socialist president of Venezuela, saying he made massive contributions to Venezuela and a very wide world. Corbyn also shared support for Chavez's successor, President Nicolas Maduro, in 2014 while congratulating him on his presidency. Following the 2017 Venezuelan Constitutional Assembly election, which was condemned and not recognized by over 40 nations, including the European Union, pressure was mounted on Corbyn to speak out against President Maduro's election. Topic Kurdistan and Kurds In 1988, Jeremy Corbyn was one of the first members of parliament to raise the issue of Saddam Hussein's Halabja chemical attack against the Kurdish people, at a time when Hussein was still an ally of the West. In the aftermath, he called upon the Tory government to institute sanctions against Iraq and Iran to end the Iran Iraq War, and to end the use of chemical weapons against the Kurds. Farat News Agency reported in 2016 that, in a meeting organized by British Kurdish People's Assembly, Corbyn said that, if peace is wanted in the region, the Kurdish people's right to self determination must be accepted. Commenting on the status of the Kurdish nationalist leader Abdullah Akalan, it was reported he remarked, if there will be a peace process and solution, Akalan must be free 
tree and at the table. At Chatham House in 2017, he was asked if he would condemn the genocide which is going on against the Kurds in Syria and in Turkey. Corbyn responded with, I would be very strong with the Turkish government on its treatment of Kurdish people and minorities and the way in which it's denied them their decency and human rights, on warfare by Turkey against the Kurds. Corbyn stated, If arms are being used to oppress people internally in violation of international law, then they simply should not be supplied to them. Topic allegations of anti-Semitism and responses In August 2015, London-based newspaper The Jewish Chronicle issued seven questions regarding Corbyn's record on anti-Semitism on its front page. The paper expressed concern about Corbyn's endorsements of individuals known for promoting anti-Semitic ideas, and his relationship with Islamist organizations Hezbollah and Hamas. A September 2018 poll conducted by Servation on behalf of the Jewish Chronicle found that 85.9% of British Jews and 39% of the British public believed Corbyn to be anti-Semitic. Topic: <laughs> Actions against anti-Semitism. Der Spiegel described Corbyn as a human rights activist whose "...political career has been characterized by a consistent stance against racism and intolerance," but following incidents of antisemitism, "...has done little to stem the tide and has even made the problem worse at times," dividing his supporters. In March 2018, the Morning Star said that Corbyn had a record of opposing fascism, racism and antisemitism. This included being the coordinator and spokesperson against the National Front March from Ducats Common, North London. In April 1977, he was the keynote speaker at the event's 2017 anniversary festival. He later served as National Secretary of Anti Fascist Action in the mid 1980s. He has signed several parliamentary early day motions EDMs opposing anti Semitism. In 2002, he was the primary sponsor of an EDM condemning an attack on the Finsbury Park Synagogue in his constituency in North London. He signed the Combating Antisemitism EDM in 2003 following terrorist attacks on two Istanbul synagogues. In 2010, he was one of 31 MPs to sign a motion in support of Jews facing persecution in Yemen. In the same year, he was one of 42 MPs to sign a motion supporting the Jewish News investigation into the use of Facebook to promote antisemitism. In 2012, he signed an EDM to try and save BBC Radio Manchester's Jewish Citizen Manchester show, and in 2013, was one of 33 MPs to sign a motion condemning antisemitism in sport. Topic. Dear Yassin Remembered In 2013 Corbyn, along with fellow Labour MP Gerald Kaufman, attended events of Dear Yassin Remembered, commemorating the Dear Yassin Massacre of Palestinians in 1948. Dear Yassin Remembered was founded by Holocaust denier Paul Eisen. Corbyn said that this took place before Eisen had made his views known publicly, and that he would not have associated with him had he known, although the Jewish Chronicle and the Daily Telegraph reported that Eisen's views were known about in 2005 and the Jerusalem Post noted that Eisen had written an article in 2008 entitled, My Life as a Holocaust Denier. Topic. Membership of anti-Semitic Facebook groups In March 2018, it was reported that Corbyn and some of his office staff had been members of a closed Facebook group, Palestine Live, where anti-Semitic comments had been made. Corbyn's office issued a statement saying that he had no knowledge of what was being discussed in the group. He left the group after becoming Labour leader in 2015. According to HuffPost he was enrolled by someone else in 2014 and had only made a small number of posts. Two weeks later, Corbyn's membership of Facebook group History of Palestine, which contained anti-Semitic comments, became known. He then left the group, to which he had been added around 2014. Corbyn's spokesman said, He was added to this group without his knowledge. Later in March, it was reported that Corbyn had been a member of another group containing anti-Semitic content. Corbyn left the group following the reports. Topic. Comments about the Freedom for Humanity mural Corbyn posted a comment on Facebook in 2012 questioning the removal of a mural that had been painted on private property in London and removed by the local council following complaints from residents. He said, 
I sincerely regret that I did not look more closely at the image I was commenting on, the contents of which are deeply disturbing and anti-Semitic." The Board of Deputies of British Jews and the Jewish Leadership Council together asserted that the episode was an example supporting the idea that Corbyn "...never sees or understands antisemitism." Topic. Comments about Zionists not understanding English irony In 2013, the Palestinian ambassador to the United Kingdom Manuel Hassassian said that Jews were "...the only children of God because nobody is stopping Israel building its messianic dream of Eretz Israel." These comments were criticized by pro Israel activists at the time. Commenting on the event later in 2013, Corbyn said that the ambassador had been berated by Zionists at the meeting who had not understood the English irony used by the Palestinian ambassador in his speech. In August 2018, Corbyn said that he had made his comments in order to defend the Palestinian ambassador in the face of what I thought were deliberate misrepresentations by people for whom English was a first language, when it isn't for the ambassador." He further stated that he had used the term Zionist in an "...accurate political sense and not as a euphemism for Jewish people," and that he would be careful using the term "...Zionist," because the political term had been "...hijacked as code for Jews." In August 2018, former Chief Rabbi Jonathan Sachs called Corbyn's remarks, "...the most offensive statement made by a senior British politician since Enoch Powell's 1968 Rivers of Blood speech." <laughs> Responses In August 2015, dozens of Jewish critics of Israel wrote a letter to the Jewish Chronicle in support of Corbyn. They stated in the letter, your assertion that your attack on Jeremy Corbyn is supported by the vast majority of British Jews is without foundation. You speak only for Jews who support Israel, right or wrong. They continued, There is something deeply unpleasant and dishonest about your McCarthyite guilt by association technique. Jeremy Corbyn's parliamentary record over 32 years has consistently opposed all racism, including antisemitism. The activists who were signatories to the letter included Lawrence Dreyfus, Selma James, Miriam Margulies, Elon Pape, Michael Rosen, and Avi Slame. In April 2016, 82 Jewish members and supporters of the Labour Party and of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership wrote an open letter to The Guardian stating that they do not accept that antisemitism is rife in the Labour Party and that these accusations are part of a wider campaign against the Labour leadership, and they have been timed particularly to do damage to the Labour Party and its prospects in elections in the coming week." The Jewish members and supporters included Miriam David, Ivor Dimbina, Professor Stephen Deutsch, Selma James, Miriam Margulies, Stephen Marks, Charles Shar Murray, Ian Seville and Lynn Siegel. In March 2018, the Board of Deputies of British Jews and the Jewish Leadership Council accused Corbyn of not tackling antisemitism, saying that Corbyn is repeatedly found alongside people with blatantly antisemitic views, but claims never to hear or read them. Again and again, Jeremy Corbyn has sided with anti-Semites rather than Jews. Jewish Voice for Labour said it was appalled by the comments, which did not represent us or the great majority of Jews in the party." Arguing that Corbyn has a "...consistent commitment to anti-racism." During an interview with Jewish News, Corbyn stated that he was "...not an anti-Semite in any form," and that he challenges "...anti-Semitism whenever it arises and no anti-Semitic remarks are done in my name or would ever be done in my name." In April 2018, "...more than 40 senior academics." signed an open letter condemning media criticism of Corbyn's response to antisemitism, saying it was "...framed in such a way as to mystify the real sources of anti-Jewish bigotry and to weaponize it against a single political figure just ahead of important elections." 
The academics included Lynn Siegel, Annabel Sraberny, Beverly Skeggs, Gary Hall, Neve Gordon, Margaret Gallagher, Maria Chatzakristodoulou, Jill Daniels, and Ruth Catlow. In July 2018, three Jewish newspapers in Britain published an identical front page criticizing Corbyn's handling of antisemitism and calling a Corbyn led government an existential threat to Jewish life in Britain. Responding, Corbyn said the notion that he or Labour posed an existential threat was overheated rhetoric, but agreed that factions of the Labour Party had issues with anti-Semitism and that there was work to be done for Labour to regain the trust of British Jews. He told The Guardian that anti-Semitism was a problem that Labour is working to overcome. He said that some criticism of Israel may stray into anti-Semitism at times, but denied that all forms of anti-Zionism were inherently racist, and pledged to root out anti-Semitism within the party, saying, People who dish out anti-Semitic poison need to understand, you do not do it in my name. You are not my supporters and have no place in our movement. In August 2018 Labour MP Frank Field resigned the whip, citing among other issues, Labour's leadership becoming a force for anti-Semitism in British politics. A Labour Party spokesman said, Jeremy Corbyn thanks Frank Field for his service to the Labour Party. A month before, Field had lost a confidence vote in his constituency party, after siding with the Conservative government in Brexit votes. Personal life Corbyn lives in Finsbury Park, Islington, North London. He has been married three times and divorced twice, and has three sons with his second wife. In 1974, he married Jane Chapman, a fellow Labour councillor for Herringy and now a professor at the University of Lincoln. They divorced in 1979. Corbyn had a brief relationship with Diane Abbott and went on a motorbike tour of East Germany with her. After his marriage to Chapman ended, in 1987, he married Chilean exile Claudia Brachita, granddaughter of Ricardo Brachita, Consul General of Spain in Santiago, by whom he has three sons. Following a difference of opinion about sending their son to a grammar school, Corbyn opposes selective education. They divorced in 1999 after two years of separation, although Corbyn said in June 2015 that he continues to get on very well with his former wife. His son subsequently attended Queen Elizabeth's school, which was his wife's first choice. Their second son, Sebastian, worked on his leadership campaign and is now employed as John McDonnell's chief of staff. In 2001, his second oldest brother, Andrew Corbin, a geologist, died of a brain hemorrhage in Papua New Guinea. Jeremy Corbin went to Papua New Guinea, from where he travelled with the body to Australia, where his brother's wife and children were staying. In 2012, Corbin went to Mexico to marry his Mexican born partner Laura Alvarez, who runs a fair trade coffee import business. In 2015 her coffee business came under scrutiny after being accused of exploiting workers in her native Mexico by selling luxury coffee marketed as fair trade and made by impoverished farmers who earned only 93p of the £10 per bag selling price. A former human rights lawyer in Mexico, she first met Corbyn shortly after his divorce from Brachita, having come to London to support her sister Marcella following the abduction of her niece to America by her sister's estranged husband. They contacted fellow Labour MP Tony Benn for assistance, who introduced them to Corbyn who met with the police on their behalf and spoke at fundraisers until the girl was located in 2003. Alvarez returned to Mexico, with the couple maintaining a long-distance relationship until she moved to London in 2011. Alvarez has described Corbyn as, "...not very good at housework but he is a good politician." He has a cat called El Gato and previously owned a dog called Mango, described by The Observer in 1984 as Corbin's only constant companion at the time. Corbin missed his youngest son's birth as he was lecturing NUP members at the same hospital. Topic. Personal beliefs and interests Interviewed by the Huffington Post in December 2015, Corbyn refused to say what his religious beliefs were, saying that they were a private thing, while denying that he was an atheist. He has said that he is skeptical of having a God in his life. He compared his concerns about the environment to a sort of spiritualism. Corbyn has described himself as frugal, telling Simon Hattonstone of The Guardian. I don't spend a lot of money, I lead a very normal life, I ride a bicycle and I don't have a car." 
He has been a vegetarian for nearly 50 years, after having volunteered on a pig farm in Jamaica when he was 19. Although he has been described in the media as teetotal, he said in an interview with the Mirror newspaper that he does drink alcohol but very, very little. Corbyn is a member of the all-party parliamentary group on cycling. He enjoys reading and writing, and speaks fluent Spanish. He supports Arsenal FC, based in his constituency, and has signed parliamentary motions praising the successes of the club's men's and women's teams. He named Jens Lehmann, Ian Wright and Dennis Bergkamp as his favorite Arsenal players, and has campaigned for the club to pay its staff a living wage. Corbin is an avid, drain spotter, and has photographed decorative drain and manhole covers throughout the country. Topic. Awards and recognition In 2013, Corbin was awarded the Gandhi International Peace Award for his consistent efforts over a 30-year parliamentary career to uphold the Gandhian values of social justice and non-violence. In the same year, he was honored by the Grassroot Diplomat Initiative for his ongoing support for a number of non-government organizations and civil causes. Corbyn has won the Parliamentary Beard of the Year Award a record six times, as well as being named as the Beard Liberation Front's Beard of the Year, having previously described his beard as a form of dissent against New Labour. In December 2017, he was one of three recipients awarded the Sean McBride Peace Prize for his sustained and powerful political work for disarmament and peace. The award was announced the previous September. Topic. See also Official Opposition Frontbench Parliament of the United Kingdom Relocation Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Media related to Jeremy Corbyn at Wikimedia Commons Jeremy Corbyn on Twitter Official website Profile at Parliament of the United Kingdom Contributions in Parliament at Hansard 2010-present Contributions in Parliament during 2006-07-2007-08-2008-09-2009-2010 at Hansard Archives Contributions in Parliament at Hansard 1803-2005 Voting record at Public Whip Record in Parliament at They Work For You Profile at Westminster Parliamentary Record Articles authored at Journalisted